Thank you for that introduction. Mr. Gurdi, distinguished CIOs and guests from India, Dell's executive, welcome to Macau. On behalf of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, we also send you our regards and welcome. Macau and Hong Kong, it's uh, very similar because we are the special administrative regions, in short, SAR, of the republics of China under the one country, two systems regime, which is also very unique in the world. And of course, Hong Kong, uh, there's a commonality, was a British colony uh, like India until 1997. As the government chief information officer of Hong Kong, I share with you the same mission to support effective and efficient transformation of organization and operation through adoption of information and communication technology, ICT in short. And you may ask what Hong Kong government and Dell's uh, well, its relationship uh, besides PCs, but I find out the answer, in fact, only this morning um, I was touring wrong. I've, we have 27 data centers, and one of which belongs to the Hong Kong Observatory that is uh, forecasting weather and climate. And I found out this morning that we have been using a supercomputer from Dell, and uh, we replaced that with uh, a crazy system with a Dell supercomputer running massively parallel processes. Um, and that's one of the transformation we made. In the next 10 minutes, uh, allow me to uh, highlight um, some of Hong Kong's ICT infrastructure and development blueprint, and also our recent development. So this is sort of bringing the future and global back to present and very local in Hong Kong. And since the early 1990s, uh, Hong Kong has invested significantly on IT infrastructure. We have an excellent and robust telecommunications network with connections through nine submarine cable systems, 17 overland cable systems, and eight satellites supporting our ICT infrastructure and making Hong Kong a major telecommunication and internet hub in the region. The average peak internet connection speed of Hong Kong connecting to the outside world is 49.2 megabits per second, and average internet connection speed is 8.9 megabits per second, making this the first and the third fastest globally. Our telecommunications market is fully liberalized and very competitive, and our telecommunication charges are low. The Hong Kong government has established an ICT blueprint, which is mapped out in the Digital 21 strategy and cover five action areas. I will venture to highlight them briefly. The first action area is to facilitate a digital economy to increase our competitiveness and efficiency. According to a report released by Google Hong Kong in May 2011, about 12.4 billion US dollar is generated by the internet economy, which worth almost 6% of our GDP in 2009. Underpinning our success is the government's strong investment in IC infrastructure that I earlier mentioned, and the enormous growth potential unleashed by the vast majority of small and medium enterprises. I call them SMEs. They actively use the internet to achieve higher sales. Our effort to strengthen our leading positions will continue. We have introduced electronic transaction ordinance and digital certificates with the appropriate system and processes to support electronic commerce. The second action area is to promote the advanced technology and innovation. We work hand in hand with the academia, industry, and professional association and overseas counterpart 
to create and apply advanced technology and innovative solutions. Um, Hong Kong has not been a big innovator of technology, but we've been a creator and innovator and advanced user for ICT solution. That's how our business, and that's also how uh, developing Hong Kong as a financial center in the parts of the world. The government is also generous in financing projects that contribute to technology upgrading or introduce innovative ideas and commercialize their R&D deliverables. We have also made substantial investment in building world-class high-tech facilities and research centers, including Cyberport, which is our flagship facilities for ICT developments, and the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park. The third action area is to develop Hong Kong as a hub for technological cooperation and trade. Hong Kong is well positioned because it is really a city where the East meets the West, and we also have the big mainland China market behind us. We have established arrangements with our counterparts from mainland China and all over the world, and in fields of cooperation range from mutual recognition of digital certificates, enhancing food and agricultural product safety by applying different technology in source tracing to joint promotion of quality ICT products and services. The fourth action area is to enable the next generation of e-government services. And the government of Hong Kong has been automating and transforming manual process that started 40 odd years ago. As a caring government, we always strive to develop more user-centric, personalized and mobile e-government services to bring convenience and information to the public. In view of the prevalent use of smartphones in Hong Kong, the government leverages on mobile technology to provide on-the-go services for the public. Hong Kong has already achieved a 220% penetration of mobile phones and 67% of those are smartphones. We now have launched 45 e-government mobile apps and have been opening up public sector information for creative value added reuse. A more recent application we call GovHK notification is uh, law, it was launched and uh, it has also received very popular um, uh, use. And on the week that it was launched, it hit 300,000 uh, downloads. And this uh, application actually provides all sorts of alerts, including traffic information, um, food alerts, and so on. And one of our direction is to develop Hong Kong into an, a center of excellence for mobile apps. And we also use social media to engage with the public. And over 180 public services are delivered through the internet. The fifth action area is to build a digitally inclusive society. Hong Kong runs a comprehensive digital inclusion program which cover initiatives to empower the elderly to use ICT and enable students from low-income families to acquire affordable broadband service and computers so that they can undertake internet learning at home. We also help businesses, especially those with websites are, are frequently visited by persons with disabilities, adopt web accessibility designs by providing resources through a thematic website and organize seminars and workshops. We will launch a recognition scheme to show appreciation to organizations adopting web accessibility design and to provide advisory support to them. On a macro level, the implementation of the Digital 21 strategy has strengthened our solid ICT foundation and trenched our competitive advantage. And one major opportunity lies with taking advantage of Hong Kong's position as a regional data center and cloud computing hub. Data centers are essential infrastructure supporting the long-term growth of knowledge-based economies, while data 
centers are supporting mission critical business operation of industry with high economic values such as financial services, trade and logistics. Cloud enabled data centers are also door openers to organizations which have to deliver service at unprecedented speed, cost effectiveness and agility. And we have been fostering Hong Kong as the prime location for high tier mission crit critical data centers in this region. According to the data center risk index uh, published, Hong Kong has been ranked as the safest place in Asia for setting up data centers for two ex consecutive years because we do not have any natural disaster and we have a supreme electricity power supply at um, a reliability rate of 99.999%. And our telecommunication market has been liberalized and there's no restriction on foreign ownership. Our robust and agile ICT infrastructure is also very strong uh, with a wide range of innovative and advanced telecommunication services available at low cost. As a fully established gateway to China, Hong Kong is also second to none. Under the Closer Economic Partnership Arrangement, CEPA in short, a unique free trade deal between the mainland China and Hong Kong, uh, companies which have established its business presence in Hong Kong can enjoy easier access to the mainland market regardless of any nationality. The arrangement contains a number of provisions specific to the ICT sectors as well. We also regularly enforce the laws on the protection of data privacy and intellectual property rights. Free flow of information is continually guaranteed and we have no content censorship. This constitutes a solid legal foundation and are conducive to creating a safe and secure environment. Hong Kong government is actively promoting and pursuing cloud computing as it will transform the way IT products and services are delivered. For this purpose, encouraging the local industry to develop advanced cloud computing technologies and application is on top of our agenda. We are taking the lead to develop a government cloud for service such as e-procurement, finance system, government online services hosting, and others. And to drive the development of cloud service, the government procures public cloud service from the market to encourage private investment and spur the blossoming of cloud computing technologies in the market. We also recently set up an expert group of cloud computing services and standards and established an expert committee on cloud computing services and standards with our partners in Guangdong, which is a mainland province adjacent to Hong Kong. These committees will provide platforms for the industry to promote the adoption and development of cloud computing services and standards, as well as to nurture cloud computing talents. To conclude, government-like enterprises apply ICT for increased productivity, enhance public services, improve efficiency, and very importantly, for business process transformation. The main difference between private and government is in the measurement how LRI is measure or base, and private enterprises mainly based on financial return, but for government, it's very much based on how we attain IT values and how we could achieve more efficient, citizen-centric public services with more vigorous governance. Once again, thank you for inviting me to speak at this summit. May I wish you all a very fruitful and enjoyable summit and a happy stay in Macau. And if you, um, on your way back to India, do stop by Hong Kong so that we could also welcome you in Hong Kong. Thank you.